Hi everyone, in this video I plan to show you a neat little workaround to measure the lowest and highest widths on slots. To do this example I have specifically designed and 3D printed a test piece. It has two examples, a tapered line situation and a curved line situation. So we will measure both these as simple line to line widths but I'll show you a trick that we have with a construction that was brought in in 416 to get the minimum and maximum widths. So let's get started. The first example we will cover is the taper example. So the idea is the nominal slot is parallel but the actual is tapered. And what we want to measure is the minimum width internally and the maximum width externally. If we look at the measurement data from the machine itself, it's behaving as we would expect. So even though the lines are relatively straight, the parallelism of each measurement, i.e. line to line, is giving us quite a high value, three and a half millimeters. And the software, as standard, is giving us the midpoint to midpoint. Whilst we could attempt to construct points at the ends of the lines, they won't always be correct, as if the taper then flips the opposite way on the next run, it will give us the incorrect size. So with the current setup, we can't actually measure the minimum internal width and the maximum external width. However, we can now measure it using the contact curve data that has been brought out in 422, along with a construction type that was brought out in 416, which is a point from a line or geometric feature to a curve. The option has been in there since 416, and it now has a, a very incredible use. Um, now that 422 allows us to construct the contact points when constructing a curve from a measured feature. That might have sounded very confusing, but hopefully this will, will help as I talk you through it. So the goal is we will construct a midline from the slot. We'll do the inside first. So let's get started with that. Easy to understand, and we'll, once we've got that, we can use that for a dimensional alignment later on. So line construct between this internal line and the right-hand side internal line. Yes, we want a midline, and the midline is now in there. We will use this for our dimensional alignment later on. The next thing we need to do is construct some curve data from each line. The idea is to get the minimum width, we need to actually assess or evaluate the individual points within the feature. And we can do that by constructing a curve from the feature itself. So curve, construct, and we'll pick up the line. Hit the green tick, curve, construct. This will be the right hand side line now, green tick. And we now have the curve data in there. This is important as we now need to construct a point from the midline and the curve data. When we do this, there are three possible options. The first is furthest posi positively from surface. The second is furthest negatively from surface. And the third is the least distance to the surface. In some situations, three will be the same point as one or two, i.e. the least distance to surface may be the same as the furthest negatively or furthest positively. So let's get that construction done. We're going to do it twice, one for the left-hand side curve data and one for the right-hand side. So point, construct from this line to this curve and you'll see it's automatically reverted to the furthest away. And if I cycle the spanner, you'll see it changes to the closest. <coughs> and then the third option there was the least distance. We want this to be least distance. So we will hit the green tick and accept that point. We're now going to repeat the same thing for the right hand side. So point, construct here and 
so the center line sorry and the curve data and if again if you just cycle the spanner you'll see it changing so we want this one here hit the green tick and the trick now is we want to dimension from point to point which in itself doesn't actually give us the correct minimum size as the alignment of this dimension is very important so now we need to right click and we will choose anti-aligned to feature we'll click this line and you'll see the dimension is now aligned through this the midline of the slot picking up on the point to point distance so just to highlight this where we were previously getting line to line measurements of almost 14 millimeters with a huge parallelism issue we can now actually dimension the minimum width and this will always vary so even if this inverts it will always give us the shortest distance from the line to the point the line to the point which then gives us the minimum so hopefully this uh, covers what I was explaining earlier but we are going to repeat this now for the curve example so this was the taper example so regarding the curve example the first thing you'll notice is despite the data from the CMM actually measuring it as a curve or a curved surface because we measured them as lines themselves the software has best fitted the points and the the lines themselves don't actually look too bad however you'll see later on when we construct the curve data from the lines just how important this new method for measuring minimum and maximum is um, so let's get started we're going to construct the midline as we did in the taper example so line construct left hand line right hand line and this will give us our midline again we are using this to construct the points from the line to the curve but also using it to anti-align the dimension later on now we need to get curve data for each line again we do this by selecting a curve hitting construct and clicking on the line hit the green tick repeat it for the right hand side so curve construct right hand line hit the green tick and you can sort of see immediately visually why this new method is really important when trying to get the minimum distance and um, if we just do line to line and judge the parallelism it's very difficult to actually work out where these smallest contact points are especially for you know tight fitting uh, components so let's just erase that we don't need it anymore the next thing we need to do is construct the point from the midline to each individual curve so again point construct line and curve and in this example it's quite easy to see uh, which one it's operating between when we hit the construct button so you can see these two are the closest and this one's furthest away I will highlight this later on in the exercise if you do have pretty parallel lines and um, this will be very very difficult to visually see so I would recommend dimensioning between the points and then cycling through each construction to make sure you get the smaller size this will be the correct one that we need particularly for this internal measurement so I'm going to go here hit the green tick construct a point on the other end so point construct line and curve and again you can cycle through and see it changing so we want here to here so the points are now in we just need a dimension between the two and again here you can see the reason for the midline not just for constructing the points themselves but also for aligning the dimension we could try a horizontal alignment here but it wouldn't be true to the measurement we need to use the anti-aligned option and then select the midline so we will right click for options choose anti-aligned to feature and then left click on the midline this is now the minimum distance of that slot something we previously couldn't do it's really useful and to highlight a point I made earlier if you right click on the point you constructed you can cycle through the different construction options 
after constructing the feature. So once we've created the dimension, we can cycle through, you know, until we get the smaller size. And this helps us make sure we have the correct setup for an internal or external slot. So you see this changing. There we go. We're good with that. And if I just turn this on, I'm going to hide some of these features. Just to repeat it one more final time on the outside. So sorry if I'm boring you already, but just to go through it one more time. So this one, we want the maximum width on the outside lines. Again, we need a midline. So line construct between the outside lines. Hit the green tick and this will give us a midline. We then need to construct curve data from both lines individually. Curve, construct, click on the left line, hit the green tick. Curve, construct, click on the right line and the green tick. We now need to construct the points. So again, point, construct between the line and the curve and cycle through your options until you're happy. Again, at this stage, if you can't actually visually differentiate the points, just create them, hit the green tick, create the dimension, and then shift them until it is the maximum or minimum. So I'm happy with this one. It's furthest away. Point, construct between the line and the right-hand curve. This looks like it's set up already, but again, cycle through just to make sure. There we go, we're happy. And we will go point to point. And then just to finish it off, we right click for options, select anti-aligned to feature, click on the midline, and that gives us our size. You can even dimension it. Oh, sorry, I changed the identifier to help you work out what it is in the program or report. And that will give us the max external width every time it runs. No matter how bad the data set is, it will analyze the contact points of each line, create the curve, and then execute the point construction. And the dimension will always be aligned through the midline of the slot, giving us the correct alignment. So that is slot maximum and minimum measurements. And that is the curve example, so example number two.